We have finally reached the last video in our beginner geometrical shape exercises series of videos where we take all of the shapes that we previously painted in the previous videos and we meld them all together into one composition and paint it in gray scale. What I'm about to show you is absolutely not the easiest way to go about painting this. I know that and I do that intentionally because I want to push you outside of your comfort zone just a little bit. And that's true whether you're a beginner or you've been doing this for a while. This is not easy for even me to paint. And part of that is because this is all out of my head. I wasn't using a reference image when I came up with this composition and how the light sources were going to be, the shading, all of that. So it goes back and forth a little bit while I'm painting it because I'm making decisions while I'm painting it. For example, initially I wasn't going to put a background in at all. Turns out I think the background actually set off the objects a little bit more. I just made a better painting. So I'm going to be using the same paper stencils that we created and used for all of the other shapes. If you want to cut out new stencils, go ahead and do so. These were a little bit hard to work with because they're really curling. They've got so much paint on them, but I use the same shields that I used for these other demonstrations. Again, I'll put the screenshot up on the screen so that you can use the same shapes that I'm using if you choose to do so. Also, because I didn't have a reference image for this, you can use mine as a reference for what you are going to paint if you wish to try and paint this as well. I'll put that up on the screen. I'm using Createx Illustration Products, the neutral gray set. I am only using four colors. The neutral gray number eight, which in contrast to all of the other colors, almost looks white. So this would be like a 20% gray on the gray scale. The neutral gray number six is the next darkest color. It's probably closer to a 40% gray. The neutral gray number four is probably about 60%. And the neutral gray number two, which is probably about an 80%. That's the darkest gray you see in the painting. Those are all mixed with 4011 reducer at about a two to one ratio, meaning two parts paint to one part reducer. Once I mixed all those colors up, I let them sit for about 10 minutes to allow the paint to really acclimate and become one with the reducer. I was using my Iwata HPCS Eclipse airbrush for the entire demonstration. It has a 0.0, I'm sorry, a 0 0.35 millimeter needle and nozzle set. My air pressure was about 20 to 22 PSI throughout the entire painting. Again, this is meant to push you a little bit outside of your comfort zone. This is designed to induce mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Mistakes help us learn and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone will actually help you to learn and progress a little bit faster. At least that's true with most people. You'll see me make several mistakes during this process. When it comes to lining up these stencils multiple times, because I paint each one, each color individually on each shape, it becomes a little bit difficult to do, but I can show you how you can overcome some of those problems when you get things that don't quite line up or when you just make mistakes, because you will see me make mistakes and we'll fix them in the video. So that being said, let's just dive in. So where I'm going to start on this particular project is I took a ruler and I made myself a horizon line across the canvas, very similar to what we did in the practice sessions. This time, however, I'm using a regular pencil so that I can erase those lines as opposed to the ink pen that I used previously. From there, I took each individual shape, the same shapes that we used before, and I put them up on here, and then I lightly traced around the outside of each shape to give myself a layout, and all but the cone are overlapping each other. So we're throwing a little bit more of a challenge into this particular composition. So to start, 
I'm going to use the same cutout stencil or shield, whichever you want to call it. I'm going to line this up with what I traced earlier, and then I can tape this onto this piece of paper that we're using to paint on. Now, before I begin actually painting any of this, I want to come in and erase my pencil lines, at least on the cone. Try to do this where you can see what I'm doing on the camera. Literally, all I'm doing is erasing that outline for the cone because we don't want that to show up in the final painting. Looks good. So, I also want to change up the light source just a little bit. Previously, the light source was coming from the top left side. This time, the light source is going to be coming more from just the left side. So the first color I'm going to use is the Createx Neutral Gray number eight. This is the lightest tone that we will be using for this particular painting. Because the light source is coming from the left, most of this will be concentrated on this left side. It's going to be a little bit difficult to see. against this sheet of paper. Ideally, I would want to be spraying from this direction while I'm doing this because I want to keep this edge underneath our mask clean. Because I have a camera right here, I can't really do that. So when you're doing this at home, I would encourage you to spray in this direction, pointing the overspray and the paint flow away from this edge so that you're not blowing paint underneath it. Using very light layers and drying those layers in between. Because this is a rounded surface, that highlight's going to wrap around on the bottom side just a little bit. And there's some other mark on this paper, paper right there I would like to cover. And just because you're spraying from this side of the mask doesn't mean you don't need to control this loose mask either. You still want to hold it down and control it as you're spraying your color to prevent a ton of overspray from getting where you don't want that overspray. I'm going to bring this out. Probably to about right here. Don't need to cover the entire surface of the cone because a lot of this is going to be in shadow. Again, I'm drying the paint more than I'm actually painting. I'm drying the paint simply with just airflow. No paint is flowing. 
right now it's just air and you can probably see on camera the wet paint going over the red and how it dulls out once it's dry You can see that color just a little bit with the mask lifted and there is some other scars and marks on this piece of paper. That's okay, again, this is just a practice exercise and this has been up on my easel for a while. Now, an important thing to note here is our ball, and I'm not sure if these pencil lines are showing up on camera very well, but our ball is pretty close to the cone. This is probably about an inch apart and because the light source is coming from the left, the highlight is going to be on the left side on both objects, obviously. There's also going to be a little bit of a secondary shadow because we might have a little bit of light coming from the right. So I want to add a little bit of this color on the right side of the cone as well, but it's going to be a little bit curved because remember, the cone is a curved shape in this way. The ball is also a curved shape in this way. So that shadow would be a little bit curved. It's not going to be just a straight shadow. Now, I know this is going to be difficult to see on camera because I'm working over a white piece of paper the very light gray. I'm coming in and adding kind of a little bit of a rounded shape right in this area. Still controlling the mask, trying to prevent overspray much as I can from walking up underneath our stencil. It really doesn't need very much in this area because it's going to be shadowed more on this side it's going to get lighter and then it's going to be coming into the shadow again. Make sure this is dry. if you can actually see that and I can see it with the naked eye I'm not sure if this is going to show up on camera or not now, rather than going straight to the next color because we have a composition here with other pieces I'm going to go ahead and take this down and this is where things are going to get a little bit interesting because the last of our three shapes are all overlapping, so we're going to need more than one shield. For the sphere, we're going to need to put up the cube. And I'll tape this in place because the cube is sitting in front of the sphere. So I don't want to paint this bottom corner of the sphere also don't want to paint or leave or paint over this pencil line where I traced around the cube. So we can erase that once we have it lined up and taped onto the surface. From there I'm going to do the same thing with the sphere. I'm going to line this up as close as I can to what I traced. It's pretty close. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and then I can tape this in place. 
So now with the sphere stencil taped over our cube stencil, this portion is blocked off because the cube, again, is forward of the sphere. Before we begin painting, once again, I want to bring this up. I'm going to erase these traced lines so that I don't paint over them and you'll see them later. I am leaving the horizon line in between because I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. So at this point, I'm still using the Createx Neutral Gray number eight. It's a very light shade. Again, our light source is coming from the left side. So the left side of this sphere is going to be in highlight. Once again, if I didn't have a camera right here, I would be spraying from the opposite side in order to allow the flow of the paint in the air to go over my stencil. Because I have this camera right here, that's not an option for me. So I'm trying to make sure I'm holding the stencil down. And I'm trying to make sure I'm spraying at pretty much straight at this so it's not really lifting it a lot. Remember to be pointing down in the direction that you want the paint to flow as well when you're close to these edges of your mask because if you're trying to spray straight on, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get some overspray coming over the side. You can probably see that the blue overspray around this mask previously is getting drowned out by this light gray. So I'll work this color into the sphere a little bit, but not crazy. I'm only bringing it in probably an inch or so because the vast majority of this is going to be in shadow. Working slowly in very light layers, drying those layers in between. That's really important when you're working with a really light color that you can't necessarily see going on the surface. Working in light layers is very important because if you can't see the paint, it's very easy to really hammer it on thinking that you're not getting any paint on the surface. Because that's what my brain is telling me right now. Is this doesn't look any different. I'm not really spraying any paint on the surface. I know I am because I'm starting to cover up the blue overspray that was around this stencil before. But it's very difficult to see on the actual paper surface. This would work better if we had a very light gray background to paint this over. So this is the same thing we talked about just a minute ago as far as this sphere having a secondary reflection on the cone because maybe there's a slight light source coming from the right side. The cylinder is on the right side of the sphere so there's probably going to be a little bit of a secondary reflected highlight on this side as well. So to create that I want to make sure that my cube stencil is down solidly and same thing, I'm going to begin putting some of this paint down in a rounded fashion. I'm not just spraying a straight line, I'm spraying it in a round stroke. 
I know this is difficult to see. It's hard to see in person. I'm sure it's even more difficult when I'm trying to do this on camera. But again, you can see the paint beginning to cover the blue overspray on this side. Doesn't take a lot. Make sure it's dry with only air coming out of the brush. So let's take a look. It is difficult to see, I know, especially on camera, but I can see it on the camera. There's a very light gray layer of paint going around a lot of these areas. Now, because this color is so light, it is going to be a little bit difficult to realign our stencils when we go to the next color. It can be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the circle stencil. And the next shape I'm going to go to is the cylinder, which is also behind the cube. So I wanna leave the cube in place, but this piece of tape right here is covering part of our cylinder, so I'm going to remove it. And move it over just a little bit so it's not in our way. By the way, this is drafting tape. When you're working on paper, drafting tape is excellent because you can actually pull it off of a piece of paper without tearing the paper. Same thing, I'm going to bring up our sphere stencil Try to get it lined up as close as I can to how I traced this originally. With a couple of pieces of drafting tape, we can stick it to our surface. Now remember with our cylinder, we actually had three masks. We had the body of the cylinder itself in positive and negative form, and then we have the top of the cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and line the top of the cylinder up as well. Again, taking your time, you're lining these stencils up will pay off in the long run because you won't have white edges in between the different stencil layers. It's not easy to do always. Sometimes you get lucky. Not always. That's probably close enough. I can fudge it a little bit if I need to. I'm gonna mask that one on the bottom side so I can hinge this up or the bottom down. I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape up here to hold the top one up out of my way. And I'm going to add a little bit of color on the top of this cylinder, which when I look at it now is not quite lined up correctly. Because I can still see my pencil traced lines, which reminds me, we need to erase those before we start painting. So again, I'll come back in and erase the pencil lines around the perimeter of the sphere and also the perimeter of our cube. So 
so that we don't see those later. There's a little bit of a, another splotch of something there. Now we're actually ready to paint. So I'm gonna add some of this color to the top of the sphere. I'm sorry, the cylinder. Very lightly. And this is more or less just to put color on the board. So I have something to register it to later on when we come to the darker colors. In reality, you could skip this step altogether. Because it is difficult to see it on this white piece of paper. The advantage to going ahead and using this super light gray on this white piece of paper is if a mistake is made, it's going to be a lot easier to repair because we can come right back to this color that is already on the canvas. So I can see I've got a good oval shape for the top of the cylinder there. Go ahead and remove this piece of tape and let that mask fall. Double check, that's pretty close to being aligned, so I think we're good. Same thing, the light source is coming from the left side. There's actually going to be more light at the top corner of this cylinder because the cube is in the way. So I'm going to concentrate most of my spray right up here in this top corner. I'll bring it all the way down to where the cube is overlapping it. Now this is far enough over from the camera that I can actually work at an angle, although I'm not sure that's going to allow you to see what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to work more straight on again. Still working in light layers drying those layers in between. See how I'm angling the brush down. I'm aiming down while I'm spraying near the top. And what's that? What that is doing is the air pressure is pushing the mask back onto the surface as I'm spraying downward. You still have to be careful about this left edge. You can still get some overspray drifting under that as well as the cube mask. Lift this mask up and see. Yep, there's definitely paint there. Drop it back down. A little bit of this highlight will be along this right edge of the cube. Not a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and throw a small amount of paint into this area. Try that. And same thing with the other shapes that we've already added this color to. There's probably a secondary highlight source or secondary reflection source on the right side. So we'll add a little bit of this color 
on this side. Still working very lightly, drying what I just put down. Right now this is only air. Now I'm applying some paint. Right back to only air. Lift that up. Yep, I can definitely see some of that color on the very edge of our cylinder. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and remove the cylinder mask. Being careful not to pull the cube off. The reason I was being very careful not to pull the cube off is because we can use this to align our next masks. Now remember, with the cube, we were using four separate masks. Right now we're concentrating only on the highlight sides. So really, all I need is this left side and probably some of the top. So I'm going to find the left side mask and then I'm going to line it up with the mask that I already have on the surface. This one is a little bit crinkled still from the heavy application of paint that I used when I painted this. I tape this up here, being very careful not to put the tape directly over the fresh paint that we've applied on the other shapes. It is fairly dry, but it's only been a few minutes versus 30 minutes to an hour where I would be more comfortable putting tape directly over one of those. So now with this lined up, we can go ahead and remove this one and take the eraser and erase the rest of the pencil outline for this shape. Good. So once again, our highlight is coming from the left edge. So this is going to be pretty bright, this whole side, because there's more of the side of a cube that is going to be facing the light compared to these rounded surfaces. This surface is flat. It's going to be quite a bit brighter comparatively to the other shapes that we have. One of the downsides to having two pieces of tape close together near the center is you can pull this mask one way or the other. So be conscious of that and careful to keep it aligned correctly. Still working in light layers. Trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing while I'm still holding the mask down. Rolling your overspray. See down here, I'm going to aim the airbrush up toward this bottom edge. Mostly what that's doing is preventing overspray from traveling beyond the bottom edge of this paper mask. I'm 
again because this side is flat and subjected to more of the light source I'm going to put a light wash of this color over the entire side Make sure this is dry. That's probably pretty good. So the next mask we need is the top because that will also have some of this highlight color showing on it. So keeping the first mask in place as we have before, I'm going to try to line this up as best I can. May not be perfect, but we can come in and make adjustments later. And it's going to be a lot easier to line these masks up if you didn't flood them with paint the first time or if you cut new masks out. These are very curled because in the last episode of this series, I got a little carried away and was really hammering the paint on, which is not a good way to paint, especially with water-based paint. That's pretty close. Notice I taped that one on the bottom because this one's already on the top. We can go ahead and remove this one now. and start adding a little bit of this color to the very top of our cube. Very lightly, these paper edges are really curled up because I put so much paint on with that green. I would have been better off probably to make a new mask for the cube. But I'm lazy. I thought I could make this work. No problem. I'm sure I can make it work, but it might be a little bit of a problem. I'm going to add a little bit more of this color on this right edge and then a little bit more on the left edge where the light source is really coming from. Kind of fog it in in the middle. But we're not going to need a lot of this color in that area. Let that drop. That's not terrible. I can still see a hair bit of the pencil line of the circle coming around. At the end of the day, this is still just a practice piece. It's not the end of the world. I'm gonna go ahead, leave this in place. For now, one piece of tape on the top. I'm gonna clean the airbrush out off camera and go to the next color. All right, I've cleaned the brush and I've gone to the Createx Illustration Neutral Gray number six, which is a slightly darker shade of gray. You'll actually be able to see this color against this white piece of paper relatively easy compared to the last color that we sprayed. So now we can start bringing in some of the shadow. For the top of this cube, I'm going to add a very, very light wash of this color. The top of this cube is still in our light source, both the primary light source as well as the secondary or the reflected light source coming from the other side. So this is gonna get just a very minimal amount of this color, very lightly. 
probably fading it more from the back edge toward the front, but leaving this end and this end a little bit more on the brighter side. And this is really curled. It's not making my job easy at all. I'm going to hold the bottom edge down. Just fogging this color in. It's not going to take very much. Let me remove this piece of tape. Drop that down and see. Yeah, I think that's really all that needs. So, now I need to line up another mask for the cube. And we'll go ahead and put this left side on again. Same kind of deal here. This is not going to require very much paint at all because this side is really more in highlight than it is in shadow. But I want to, just a touch, a hint of this color on that highlighted side. So we can drop that down and then bring this one down. Same thing, super, super subtle, very light. Now, this edge on the sphere is going to be pretty dark. So I really don't need anything on this end. The only thing I might need is just to differentiate the top of the cube from the side. We can bring in just a little bit of this color on this very top line. Again, I'm fighting with this curled stencil. Let's have a look at that. Yep, I like that. If anything, I think the top end needs to be a little bit darker on this corner on the top side in order to differentiate that. So I'm going to bring this one back up, put a piece of tape up here to hold that up. I'm going to add just a little bit more paint. I'll grab another piece of tape to hold this up. I'll get rid of that one. So I'm going to add just a little bit more paint in this corner right here and bring it to my left, because this side is going to be quite a bit darker. Again, fogging a little bit of color over the entire center of the top. There we go. Now that differentiates this side from the top a little bit better. I'll drop this one back down. There's a small little area where you can see probably my finger was right there, so it's a little bit darker on this side, a little bit lighter on this side. Let's see if I can even that out. Just a couple little fogging strokes. It's a little bit better. The alignment is not perfect. There is a little bit of an edge. I can see a white edge there. That's okay, we'll fix that later. Let's bring in just a little bit more of this color on this highlighted side. Not a lot, I want just a very light amount on the edge. Very light amount on this edge, corner. Fog it up slightly on the right side of this highlighted side. A little bit goes a long way. Lift that up. Yep, 
yeah, I think that'll work. And if you've gone too dark, again, that's why I start with this really light gray to begin with because it's super easy to come back in and add some of that gray in later if you need to. So we can go ahead and remove these masks. You know what? I'm going to go ahead, I should have lined this up before I took the other two down, but I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of this color onto the really dark shadowed side of our cube. So I'm going to line this up best I can. Most of this side of the cube is going to be probably the next color, the next two colors, but adding some of this color onto this side is going to make it a little bit easier to see. So I can fog in a little bit of this color around the perimeter. Maybe fog it in the center just a little bit. Still trying to control this really curled mask. It doesn't take a lot of paint here to make this much more visible as you can see. So we can go ahead and take this one down now. The next shape I'm going to go to is our cylinder. So we need to mask off our cube once again because it is in front of the cylinder and we don't want be painting over our cylinder so we can line this up as best we can tape it in place gonna have to fight that curl some more it is what it is then we can bring our cylinder up Let's see if we can line this up pretty close to where it is supposed to be What I'm doing here is just like the old flip books when you were a kid, if you ever drew pictures in the bottom of your school books to make cartoons. It's essentially what I'm doing. I'm just flipping this back and forth and looking because I can see the light paint on the paper to see if I'm pretty close to being lined up. That is pretty close. So once again, remember our light source is coming from the left side. We also have a secondary light source coming from the right. So we don't want to take this color all the way to the edge. I'm going to be bringing it in about right here. And if some overspray carries over toward the edge, that's okay. Again, I'm aiming my airbrush downward at this point so that I'm not blowing paint underneath the mask on the top. It's working very, very lightly. And I may be getting some overspray underneath the bottom of the mask when I'm doing this. That's okay, we can come back in with an eraser later and repair that if we really need to. Right now we're just trying to get some color in here. Same thing, the highlight side is on the left side. So we're not gonna bring this color all the way over to the left. In fact, it's probably not going to be I don't want to bring it all the way to the edge of the cube either. I want to bring it a little bit to the right of the edge of the cube because the edge of this cube is going to be darker and I want it to come forward. I 
Again, most of this area right here is going to be the darker colors. We don't need to fill in all of this with this paint because the darker colors are going to fade into the lighter areas that we're spraying right now. And bring a little bit of this up on the side above the cube. Remember, this little corner here is more in highlight. Maybe even curving slightly because there's a sphere in front of it. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, good with that. So let's line up the top of our cylinder. It's absolutely fine to go in and paint each one of these shapes one at a time if you prefer to do so. Because then you only have to use these shields a few times compared to a lot of times. I just prefer, once I have a color in the airbrush, to stick with it and finish all that I can or need to finish with that color. And it's a little bit of a challenge trying to line these all up. The other thing I like as far as a teaching opportunity, when you have to line these stencils up over and over and over again, is you learn they don't have to be perfect every single time. You can come in and repair those little mistakes. I'm sure I'm going to have some of those little mistakes. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'll take this one down the bottom side, bring this one up, tape it out of the way, bring this one back up after it fell down, and we can add just a hint of this color on the top of our cylinder. We don't need a lot. Remember, this is more a light source. You want to differentiate the top from the side. So I like that line that we have already on the front side. Maybe just adding a little bit of this color on the top edge. And this color is light enough that it is hard to see on the paper when you're spraying it, especially when you have other colors of overspray on your shields. So drop the stencil down and take a look at what you've got. I'd probably add just a little bit more. I'm spraying more on the paper stencil than I am on the actual paper canvas. I think that'll work other than this edge. This edge is going to be in highlight on the side, so I might want to bring in a little bit more of this darker color just on this little corner. Again, very lightly. Dry it, drop it, take a look, make sure you're happy with it. And my alignment is not super good there. That's okay. We'll fix that later. So now we can go ahead and remove these. I'm reusing the same pieces of tape over and over again too if you haven't caught on to that. Because there's really no reason to waste tape. So at this point, 
Let's go back to our sphere. See if we can line this up somewhat close to where it was before. That's pretty close. Whoops, I just moved it. You know why I moved it? Because this top edge wasn't even close to remotely being straight, and that was bothering me. There we go, that's probably close enough. So we can tape this up. Same thing. We already have our highlight side over here. We have a little bit of a highlight or reflected highlight over here. That reflected light highlight is going to be darker right above the cube. So I'm going to bring in some of this color right along the top edge of our cube stencil. And I'm going to curl it up on the sphere just like we did the highlight earlier. Drying the paint in between. Remember not to get it too heavy, or too wet. And just let it fade into that lighter value that we sprayed first of all. Same thing on this side of the cube. This is the highlight side of the cube. It's gonna be really bright. The sphere, on the other hand, is going to be pretty dark. It's in shadow back here. So we can bring in this color. You don't need a lot of this color because the real shadow is going to be formed with the next two colors versus this color on its own. But you want to bring in the shading with this color just to map things out and so that you can really start to see how this is working. Same thing, our highlight is more on the upper quarter of the sphere. It's going to come down, the, the slivered edge down here is going to be in highlight, but our shadow, because there's a cone right here, that cone's going to be casting a shadow on our sphere. So we want to start to create the shadow from that cone. Again, this is not the final color. This is not really the shadow color, but we can start building this in with the lighter value. And then when you come in with a darker value, you don't take it all the way to the edge of where this color has already been sprayed. You allow it to fade and blend into this color. Same thing up here. It's more in highlight. I'm going to add a little bit of this color. And the highlight again is coming from the left side. So this portion up here is going to be a little bit darker. Keeping in mind that we are working on I think it's time to clean my airbrush. The air is sticking. Keep in mind that we are working on a rounded surface so I'm not just spraying straight across. I'm actually rounding it at the top and I'll start to round it coming into the side where this little highlight is, or secondary reflected highlight. Most of this 
it's going to be in a lot of shadow. So this color is going to get covered up. A lot of it will, not all of it, but a lot of it's going to get covered up by the subsequent colors. Have a look. Wow, my alignment's way off. <laughs> So there's a couple things we can do about this right now, and I'm not sure if this is showing up on camera or not, but my shadows are a good eighth of an inch further to the left than what I originally had on here. That's okay. We'll make it work. So one thing we could do is move this mask over slightly. downside to that is then this left edge is not going to be quite right. But we can come back in and repair that. So I think at this point, that's what I'm going to do. So I've moved the mask over. Now I'm going to add some of the shadowing color into the area where it should have been to begin with. This is the nice thing about working with opaques because this color is only going to get so dark. It might take a few coats to really level this out. But it will level out. Close enough. Again, we'll come back in with a little bit darker color in here too. which will help mask that mistake. So probably what I'm going to want to do is come back in with our original color and redefine the highlight on this very edge, but we can wait until closer to the end to do that. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take this mask down and we can remove, actually, I'm going to leave that one there. And we'll come back to our cone. Try to do a better job of lining this one up. No promises. I think that's pretty close. Go ahead and tape this up here. Same thing, remember we had a secondary shadow and highlight coming on this side of the cone. So I'm going to start bringing that in and because this is a rounded surface this way and the sphere is what is actually casting the shadow. 
I'm going to keep it a little bit rounded. I'm not just spraying a straight line up and down. It's more of a curve. And then we can bring in the shadow on the top side. Remember our highlight is coming from the left. So the top, I have to reposition here. From the top, you wanna keep a sliver at the top with the highlight color if you can. But remember this is a cone, so I'm not going straight up and down. I'm at an angle. As you come closer to the center, it does, the stroke should be more up and down. But as you get towards the end on the bottom side, you're painting at an angle. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm just working on the bottom end of it. Remember, got a little bit of a secondary highlight around that shadow. So I don't want to carry this all the way over to the shadow. It had just a little bit of color, a very bottom edge, just to define it. Not too much. Maybe a little bit more coming down on the shadowed side. And just blend it into the highlight. Let's take a look. I think that's good. Let's go ahead and remove this. All right, at this point I have cleaned my airbrush out off camera and I've gone to the Createx Neutral Gray number four, which is a darker shade of gray than what we just sprayed. We still have our cube masked off here, so I'm going to leave that in place and go ahead and work on the sphere and the cylinder while this is still masked off. So we'll start with our sphere and see if I can do a better job of lining this one up this time. No promises. But it is a little bit easier to see. Now that we've got all this other paint on here, that's not straight again. Still needs to go a little bit up to the right. It's probably about as close as I'm going to get it. Again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. This is for practice. We'll tape that into place. We'll take a look at this color. It's a little bit darker. Not significantly darker, but it is a little bit darker. The same thing, I want a little bit, just a hint of this color down in this corner. But I'm not bringing it all the way up to where we brought the previous color. I want this color to fade in to the previous color. thing up here, the reflected highlight and the highlight, the top right side of the sphere is not going to be as dark. You can add a hint of this color coming up to the top, but it doesn't need very much at all. The bottom side is where it's really in shadow, both along 
the edge of the cube and on the bottom of the actual sphere. We'll add some of this color on the edge of our cube. I'm just blowing paint off of the edge of the cube stencil there. I can work on bringing color down to the bottom. Still working lightly, still drying the paint in between layers. And then we can work on adding some of this into our cone shadow. You see how I'm bringing that up. I'm pretty much stopping, letting it fade out as it gets closer to the top side where the highlight really is. I may have got a little bit heavy with the paint right here. You see that splotchiness? It means it's probably it was probably a little bit wet there. So using air to dry that. And then we can lightly fog paint back in to that area and now I'm just drying it again. This is an opaque color so it should level out. I, once I get to full saturation that should disappear. Now I'm drying again and you can see that's starting to disappear. Added some more paint, now I'm drying. And that probably looks good enough. I'll come in, just a dusting of the final really dark color right there. Might add a little bit more of this right around in the center. Very, very, very lightly. Still working on creating that circular looking pattern. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and pull this one down. And we'll move on to our cylinder. Line this up. Trying to take my time here. Make sure I've got it reasonably close. That's probably good. We'll go ahead and tape that in place. Same thing. I'm going to add this darker color more just in the center of the shadows that we've already created. Remember, my trigger is sticking still. Airbrush, it's time for a deep cleaning. So starting from the top, trying to control my mask. And I'm 
really trying to keep this just in the center of what we created before. And I know this is probably hard to see for you in the camera because my hand is in the way. I want this kind of the center just to the right to be relatively dark, not super dark. Maybe a little bit this top edge coming down. This top of the cube is going to be pretty bright, so I want a little bit of a separation between that and the cylinder so we can add some more. Just bringing streaks straight up off of the top of the cube mask. Everything else is just lines. I'm creating lines all the way up and down in the center of this cube mask. Make sure that's dry. Lift that up and see what it looks like. pretty close to the same values as the sphere. So let's go ahead and remove this one. I don't think I want any of that color on the top of the cylinder. Probably not on the top of our cube either. I say that, I could change my mind. We'll see how it looks. Let's see if we can line up our shadowed side of the cube. Pretty close. Probably not going to be perfect, as you've already seen. And we can remove this one. Double check this alignment. Probably needs to go up just a I think that's closer. It's a little hard to tell because this mask is so wrinkled. So this side is the shadow side of the cube. We're going to pretty much just put a uniform light coat of this color. On this side, again, controlling direction you're pointing your airbrush, trying to control the overspray. It's going to be darker right against this highlight edge. Make sure we dry this. Let's lift that up and see what we think. Yeah, not perfect. Not horrible. I think I'm gonna rock on with that. So we'll remove this one and let's move on to our cone. I'm trying to line this up best I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. We can make adjustments later or fix mistakes later, make corrections later, however you want to look at it. Same thing, just a little bit of this color on this right side where that shadow is of our sphere. Not a lot. 
See, before we had that gray coming all the way out to here. Now I'm only bringing it in to about the end of my thumb right there. For the center part is going to be the darkest area. I'm going to bring some of our streaks back in here. Once again, keeping it inboard. of what we actually sprayed in the previous step. A little bit more on that edge, just to define it a little bit. It's not bad. I would rather have a little bit more of a highlight right there on the very edge, but we can come back and repair that. I'm gonna leave this one in place and switch to the darkest color. So let me clean the airbrush out off camera quickly. Okay, I've cleaned the airbrush out and I've gone to the Createx Illustration Neutral Gray number two. This is a very dark gray. This is probably about 80% dark when you're looking at the gray scale. Just added just a hint of this color on that little corner there. Same thing here, going up the center, pretty much staying in the center of our cylinder, just creating a few little lines. I don't want to go too dark with this. That looks pretty good. I might bring it in just a little bit more to find on the very top. Very light lines. And I like the nice fade that we're getting here. Put a few very light streaks in some other areas. I think I'm going to get off of that. I'm going to go ahead and leave this mask taped up to the top while we go to the next portion, which is probably going to be our cube. So once again, the cube is not going to see a lot of this color other than the shadowed side. If I can try to get this lined up. best I can. It's not super easy and we'll tape this into place. I'm going to add a little bit of this color right along this top edge. Try and keep the mask down to get a clean edge. There's a little bit of a problem. A little bit along this front edge on the shadowed side, fogging this color in. And let it fade toward the back. Doesn't all need to be one absolute uniform color. Look at that. Yeah, I like the tone that we have. What I don't like is how these edges are terrible. 
a big part of that is because I saturated this shield and all the other shields for this cube so heavily when we were painting the green cube previously. I really need a nice clean straight edge to define the edge of the shadowed side of the cube. So to do that, I'm grab another shield. So I would use, you can use freehand shields for this as well. I'm just using paper because that's what we have at our disposal currently. I'm gonna do the best job I can to align this edge with the straight edge of this piece of paper. Same thing for the bottom. Lining this straight edge along the bottom side of it. Piece of tape there. Piece of tape there. Piece of tape there. And then one more for the top side. That looks pretty good. Piece of tape there. So I can use these paper edges to really clean up these edges. Hopefully sharpen them back out. I don't want to go really, really heavily with the paint application here because that will really darken up these edges. I want them to be straight and true. So I want to make them super dark. And fade some of this color off. The top edge is going to be a little bit darker. Maybe the very top, top of that corner. But I don't want it to be too dark. Let's take a look at this. Let's see how we did. That definitely looks better. It's cleaner and sharper, those two edges. The bottom edge could still use a little bit of help here. Again, it doesn't take very much at all. Maybe even this left edge, which the background will really make a difference if we put a background in this. Hint, hint. Just fog. A little bit of this color in here. Be very careful when I'm bringing my airbrush strokes, those lines down, not to go past that corner so we don't create an edge down here. What if you did create an edge down there? You can take your eraser and clean that up as well. There's actually a little bit of very slight overspray edge right there. And I see a little bit of an overspray edge right there. not the end of the world. Again, this this is completely practice. So let's bring back in our cylinder mask. And my very unconventional method of Lining this, these come down just a hair. To the right, just a hair. It's pretty close. Just 
tape this up. But before we begin painting, we need to put our cube over to mask that end of the cube off. So let's cover this up. My alignment was a little bit off the top there. Well, that's all right, we'll make it work. Same thing that we did essentially on our cones. We're gonna bring just a hint of this color in, in the very center of the darkest area that we've already created. I'm just doing dagger strokes coming off the top and then I'll bring them all the way down trying to control this loose paper mask so I don't get a lot of overspray underneath it. Probably good enough. It's probably a little too much, actually. The top of it I'm gonna leave alone. I don't want a lot of shadow up there. So next is to bring back our sphere. Somehow I've managed to put marks in the sphere. So let's see if we can line this up. Hopefully better than we did the second to the last time. It's not straight. It really bothers me when that top edge is not at least close to straight. It's kind of dumb, I know. That's my world. So, now we can bring just a hair bit of this color into our sphere. The darkest area of the sphere is going to be on the very bottom of it. Maybe a little bit of this color coming up into that shadow that the cone is casting, but the vast majority of this color is going to be down here low. Behind our cube corner. So I'm not taking this color all the way up to where we did before. I'm stopping it about right there and just letting that fade in. Maybe a tiny bit in this little corner. Not very much. And just a dust dusting in that center. Look, I like it. Take this down. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one. Let's see what we think. The reality is, I think I went a little bit darker on these three shapes than I did on the cone. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop our cone mask back down because it's still in place. And darken this up just a little bit, just in the very center of it, that line that we were creating all the way up and down. Just a little bit. Didn't need much. I think I like that. Let's take this one down. So at this point, we are going to need to create some shadows. I do have a few little overspray areas up here on the top. One right there that I missed. Remember to concentrate on 
your spray and pay attention to where you're aiming your airbrush to try and avoid that. That's not the end of the world. You can erase that relatively easily. I think I would kind of like to do a very light gray background behind all of this just to make the shape stand out a little bit more. So how do we do that when we've already painted the shapes? I'm going to tape our shapes onto the board and I do that by folding a piece of tape over on itself and I can stick it on the back of one of these shapes and then do the best I can to line this up. Probably not going to be perfect. Get it kind of close. I'll do the same thing for our other ships. Might need two pieces of tape. On the cube. There are a number of ways you can hold things to the backboard of your project. If you're working over metal, you can use magnets. I don't work over metal. So I've always just used tape. Either one works great. That's pretty close. And these may not be perfect. I'm gonna have a little bit of an issue with the cylinder because I don't have a mask cut out. For the top of that cylinder. So let me clean the airbrush out. I'm gonna go back probably to the second value of gray that we used, and then we'll come in and spray a little bit of a background around these. All right, I've gone back to the neutral gray number six. This is the second color that we used when we started painting this thing, and I'm just gonna start kind of fogging some of this color in behind our shapes, just to make them stand out a little bit more. And I know my arm is in the way right now, because I'm trying to hold down our shields. Just kind of fogging this color in. It doesn't need to be super dark. I just want something to differentiate the background from the shapes that we've painted. I'm working on around the bottom side of the cylinder and the cube for a little bit of a sp specific reason. Let's bring this up. I fade it out, looking around. Okay, because I don't have a mask cut out with both the side of the cylinder and the top of the cylinder, I'm just going to pull this off momentarily, flip it upside down, put the air airbrush down before I spill paint all over the place, because that's always a good time. And I'm gonna line it up as best I can. That's pretty close. And this will allow me to put a little bit of this background color behind the top. of our cylinder. Again, just fogging this on lightly. It's not going to take a lot 
to differentiate between the background and the shapes that we painted. We'll work on controlling your masks to try and keep from blowing paint underneath them. Not lined up 100% here, but Just fogging color in. Not real heavy. Keeping the airbrush back pretty good distance. Trying to make it somewhat even, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm out of paint, which is great because now we can come in and start working on some of our shadows. So I'm gonna pull this one off and flip it back over to its correct orientation. I'll clean the airbrush out and we'll go back to our darkest neutral gray number two. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to go to the neutral gray number four and just put a little bit of this color in. Basically the same principles that we used when painting the shapes, we're working from light to dark. I wanna do the same thing with the shadow and I'm actually not even gonna clean out the airbrush because this is a darker shade. I can pour this color directly into the brush. Spray a little bit of paint just to get the lighter shade, the lighter value out. And then we can begin adding just a little bit of this color. In here, if you wanted a slightly sharper edge for a shadow, you can use your paper masks for that as well. Remember, there's a secondary light source coming from the left. So we can add a little bit of a shadow on that side. And then maybe a little bit of a shadow on the opposite side. And I don't want it quite as sharp there. I think we'll just fog some of this color in here and I know it's hard for you to see what I'm doing and I apologize, I'm trying, I'm doing the best I can. A little bit darker right in this corner where the cylinder the cube come together. Looks good. It's going to be pretty dark underneath our sphere here. At least in the corner. You get lighter as it comes out. These shields are really not cooperating that well with me now. Same thing on the bottom edge of a cone. Got 
that a little bit wet to work on leveling that out. Once it's good and dry, I might add just a streak or two just above our horizon line there. Fade this out very lightly. Just a little bit of this darker color on the outside edges. Really make the light stand out. Back over here and try to even this out where I got it a little bit wet. Remember when you're trying to even this out, you want to keep very, very light layers. Drying the paint in between those light layers. I'm going to bring this down to the end of that defined line we have for our shadow and then allow it to fade just a little bit. Same thing, we need a little bit of a shadow on the front side because of that secondary light source. Not very much, I think. We flip this back over. And protect that top edge of our cylinder. Just fog this in. Should be good. My tape came unfolded. Fold this back over on itself. Try to line this back up. Probably close enough. Now I'm gonna empty the airbrush cup and go to the darkest shade. Once again, there's really no reason to clean the airbrush thoroughly, although I do have paint all over the side of it. But I don't need to clean the inside of the cup when I'm going to a darker shade of gray. I can just pour that gray into the airbrush. Spray a little bit of this color out until we get to that darker tone and we're good. And again, my airbrush is, the trigger is sticking. So a little bit of this down here in this bottom corner. It's pretty dark down in here and I kind of want it to be a circular shape. I don't know if that's going to work out real well or not. A little bit of this fading off this shadow and I don't need to bring our paper in to clean this up or keep this line really nice and crisp again because I'm not taking the paint all the way to that edge. Letting it fade. A little bit on this corner. A little bit on the other side, but even less. A little bit in this corner. A little bit on the shadow for the cylinder. I know this is hard to see, I apologize. And 
in just a little bit of this color. The very bottom edge. And these stencils are not doing so well right now. They've got a lot of paint on them and they are wrinkling up. So we're going to go ahead and take these down. Let's see what we have. See, I just lifted a little bit of that paint off the paper there with the tape. It's a really good idea to wait at least 30 minutes or an hour when you're using masking techniques before you put tape over fresh paint because you run the risk of letting the tape pull up some of the paint in some of these areas. Hopefully you can see how that really makes our shapes stand out a little bit more with just a little bit of color in the background. One thing that I would do is probably come in and clean up some of these edges. There's a little bit of white showing through our shadow there. And I brought that shadow up a little bit higher than I really wanted to or intended to. But I'd like to make this just a little bit darker underneath the sphere. to really differentiate the shadow from I spilled paint all over the place. Apologize. I had to clean up a small mess that I made. You can use your paper to mask off the edge of our cube there and get into this corner. So I really saw that shadow being very dark in my head. Oops, I drug some paint <laughs> onto. Well, there's a mistake we can fix. So I had some wet paint on the back of this piece of paper, and that's what just caused that problem. Really from here, it's just about cleaning things up and making things more appealing to your eye. The one thing I think I need just a hair bit of this darker color on the side of our cone here. In this shadow. Not very much, just a little bit. So we probably need to clean up some of these edges is really all that's left to do is, except for the repairs that we need to make. We can repair this, we can repair this. A little bit of paint that got into the middle of that there. And then clean up these edges with our highlights. This one needs to be a little bit brighter now that we have that background. We can clean up this edge right here. And aside from that, it's not bad. Again, this is just a practice piece. This is something to practice working with masks and shading and all of that. So let me clean out the airbrush. All right, I've cleaned out the airbrush and I washed my hands because it's getting a little out of hand and I'm probably putting fingerprints of paint onto the surface as well. From this point, I wanna come in and work on reestablishing some of our highlights. So I'm just gonna lightly place my stencil up here on the cone and hold it in place. I'm not taping it. You can tape it if you want. I'm going to bring this color back in. Really along the edge to reestablish the highlight along this edge and hopefully clean it up. just a little bit. Still working very lightly, allowing the paint to dry in between. And you can see how that has really sharpened up and defined the edge of our cone right there. That's pretty good. 
we do have a little bit of an area that needs to be repaired. So I can also come back in. Remember earlier I said, the reason I wanted to use this color and not just use the white of the paper is so that when mistakes are made, it's far easier to repair because we are using opaque colors. So I can literally paint over these mistakes with this light color. Very small strategic areas. Same thing here, we have this one. Because we already have this color as a base, we don't have to worry about matching the color of the paper. We're just matching the color of the paint that we used initially. This is the brightest side. This is the real highlight side. We probably don't really need anything else for the repair on this. We can clean up this edge just a little bit. Again, using piece of paper, set the airbrush down before I spill paint all over the place. Get this lined up pretty good. Right here is where I'm looking at. That's the spot where it's a little bit hazy. So we can just paint over that hazy spot, multiple layers drying in between. Make sure it's good and dry before you try to pull the mask away and you see how much sharper that is. It's not perfect by any means, but it's a lot sharper than it was just a second ago. I can also come back in freehand and put a few little streaks. On the bottom side of our cone. bring that highlight over a little bit more. Let's see, let's go to our cylinder. Same thing, I just wanna clean up this edge a little bit. So I'm not even gonna to try to line up the cylinder itself. I'm going to set the airbrush down again before I spill paint and use the edge of the paper to align this as best I can. Now there is the top of the cube here. I'm not planning to take my paint strokes all the way down that far. If you're concerned about it, then take another piece of paper and mask that off as well. All I want to do is get the very top edge. And working very light layers. And allowing the paint to dry. 
in between those layers. The top, the very top of our cylinder probably needs to be lightened up and cleaned up just a little bit. Set the airbrush down again. Try to line this up best I can. So you can see there's a little bit of overspray right there from the top. We'll clean that up. Maybe define this back edge. A little bit lighter so that it stands out from the background a little bit better. Probably should have made the background a little bit darker above this. That looks better. Same thing that we just did with the cone. We could bring just a few little streaks of that highlight over. It's completely optional. It's not 100% necessary. Just to brighten that up a little bit. See what, let's get the top of our cube cleaned up a little bit. Same thing that we just did on the top of the cylinder. I think this needs to be defined just a little bit more clearly now that we have that background. We can set this apart. You know what, this is so curled probably not going to do a great job. So let's take, this time I'm going to actually tape the paper up here so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I want to make sure that I get this corner aligned really well. And we'll tape this up here. And I'll put a piece of paper up for the other side. Same thing, I want to make sure that the corner on the right side is really close to being aligned. I don't want to bring this white paint down into our shaded side, so I can use another piece of paper just going to hold this one in place to get that alignment. And then we can just lightly dust on some of this color in the very corner. Very lightly, still drying it in between. And the real spot that I want to get is that top corner. So holding these pieces of paper down. And spraying in that corner. I'm going to carry it down this right side because I see some darkness just below the piece of paper. And it wasn't quite dry in that corner. I just stuck my thumb over there and I felt wet paint come up. So we might add just a little bit more into that corner. OK, 
cover up my fingerprint. That's better. Still think we need to sharpen up this edge too. Same thing, I'll use a separate piece of paper to align this corner. Not so good. Let me take this piece of paper down. See, my alignment is a little off there. Let's try this again. It's easier to see without paper hanging down from the top. Should be better. Piece of tape up here to hold that one up. I'm just fogging a little bit of this color in there. Make sure it's dry. Got that a little bit wet. See right there. Work on these mistakes. Just gonna cover up where we screwed it up. We, where I screwed it up. working very lightly, drying the paint. After I put some of this paint on here, You see, I'm just trying to cover those mistakes. The other thing I might do, while I'm thinking about it, make sure this is good and dry. I didn't quite want that highlight to go that high down here. So I can Stick this stencil back up here and work on blending this out just a little bit. That's pretty bright. It's okay, we can come back 
and push that back a little bit when we're working on these other repairs. Now, man, I need to clean my airbrush. We can work on getting this highlight a little bit brighter on the very edge of our sphere. If I can get it aligned. Pretty close. Go ahead and tape this up. So I have the use of both of my hands. Same thing, just around the very edge. Just to brighten up that highlight. Spraying realistically more on the stencil than I am the actual paper canvas. It's not lined up super well, but it's all right. We'll pull this down and you can come in and do this freehand as well. Just adding a little bit more To that highlight. It's a little difficult to do this with a camera right in front of me. I'm actually leaning over the camera, one arm on one side of the camera, one arm on the other side of the camera. Kind of blend it out just a little bit. You don't want super harsh lines. Maybe a little bit on this side where my alignment was so far off earlier. Kind of blend that back out. Very slightly. So now I will clean out the airbrush, go back to the neutral gray number six, and we can work on these repairs. Again, because I'm going to a darker shade of gray, I didn't actually clean the airbrush out. I just emptied the cup out. Now I can pour our neutral gray number six. Spray it until the darker color is coming out and we should be good to go. So come back in, paint some of this gray around the center highlight. And use a shield to protect the top of our cube here. Remember, we had a little bit of a secondary highlight there. So we don't want to cover it all up. I'm just blending this gray out from the white. Same thing down here in our cone. Can blend this out.
It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want it to be super noticeable. The other thing is this corner where my alignment was off when I was adding or refining that top edge of the cube. Cover that up just a little bit. Now I will switch to the neutral gray number four. And we'll repeat exactly what we just did. The neutral gray number four is going to be on the side of this and around. I should really put my stencil back up in here, but I'm gonna live on the dangerous side. But you can absolutely stick your shield or your stencil back up over this cone. If you're worried about getting paint where you don't want it. That a little bit heavy there. I actually darkened that edge up a lot, that side up a lot, and that again got too heavy. Give that a minute to dry and we'll work on the center of our ball here. I'm just trying to blend this out into the other colors. Bring this color up a little bit higher than it was before. That, drawing those lines across the top of the cube freehand was probably not the best way to go about that because I can't fade it up like it was before. That's all right, I need to try to level this out. Maybe bring a little bit of this, just a wash. Over where I added that lighter shade down here. So that it's not quite so bright. Now I can go back to the darkest shade, which is the neutral gray number two. The same thing, bring this in the center of this. I didn't clean out my brush all that well. This may not be quite the same shade. I'll blend it into all of this. I 
Bring the shadow out. Clean that edge a little bit. Probably clean this out. A little bit again you can throw your stencil up here if you need to the only thing I think I need now is to probably come back in with a little bit of the lightest color and clean up or add another little bitty highlight over here a little bit of a highlight doesn't need a lot but it doesn't need a little okay I've gone back to the neutral gray number eight and just want to address a little bit of this secondary highlight on the right side of our cone my airbrush is still in need of a good cleaning just a little bit on this end helps maybe I'm probably gonna call this done I didn't quite call it finished at that point. Once I turned the cameras off and I stepped back and took a look at it, I wasn't completely happy with how it looked. So I did come back in and reworked some of these areas just freehand. You can see that I reworked the right side of the cone. I wasn't happy because I had lost that shadow that's being cast from the sphere and I thought it was just too dark on that side. For the sphere, I reworked the highlight on that. You can see how it's a lot more rounded, it makes it look more like a ball. And I left a little bit of a starburst glint at the front because that would be a secondary reflected highlight either from the top of the cube or from the cylinder behind it. I darkened up the bottom of the sphere pretty significantly with that darkest color. I also darkened up the shadows a little bit all the way around and then the shadow on the right side of the cube, I darkened up this corner and kind of drug it out just a little bit more. And I'm happy with the results. Again, this was meant to push you out of your comfort zone just a little bit. It's designed to induce mistakes because learning how to fix those mistakes on something that is really not meant to be a finished artwork is a great way to learn how to fix them later when they do occur on an actual artwork. You can try this several different ways. You can move these shapes around in whatever composition you like. You can try painting them in color. You can try painting the background first. You can try masking all of these shapes off. At the end of the day, this is all practice. And there are a lot of different ways that you could attack this. This was just one, and again, it's really designed as a learning and exercise. So I hope you got something out of this. If you did, remember to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Trevor with Wicked Art Studio. I will see you all next time.